Well, good afternoon from here in Dubai, where I'm situated. You're very welcome to the latest in the SIPS MENA webinar series. And today, fantastic topic. We're here to talk about how you can use your professional procurement qualifications, your uh, procurement diploma, your professional diploma, your diploma or your certificate in procurement and supply from SIPS to gain employment, specifically in this case in the UK across all levels, senior, junior, or, or mid levels. So that's the topic for today. And we have a fantastic speakers from Fresh Start UK who are gonna take us through the session. We look forward to your participation. If you do have any questions as we go through the session, please use the Q&A button or the Q&A box below. And uh, we will pick up your questions from there and we will make sure that we allocate enough time at the towards the end of the session to pick up all your questions and address them for you. So specifically um, for those who are looking to perhaps emigrate, move across um, uh, from where you're currently situated and gain employment in the UK in the procurement and supply um, profession, this session is for you. So use the Q&A button if you've got any questions, but uh, at this point, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to, to Ray Leary, who heads up, for, up Fresh Start UK, and he's got all the information for you. So, Ray, over to you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for that introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ray Leary. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to the Fresh Start uh, webinar. Um, can you, I hope you can all see that screen. Okay, I hope you can all see that. This is a Fresh Start UK Skill Worker webinar. And this really is your, this presentation really is the first stage in your journey to full-time employment and residency in the UK. As I say, my, my name is Ray Leary. I'm the CEO of the Fresh Group. And the Fresh Group uh, incorporates Fresh Global Alliance, which is our UK-based business, and also Fresh Start UK, which is our Dubai-based business. I'd like to start by giving you a very brief background about our company before I move on to the skill worker. Our head office in the UK is, is very close to Liverpool and the picture you see there is a picture of our head office. We've been involved in investment and migration into the UK for over 12 years now. And we see ourselves as, as the experts on the UK simply because we do not get involved in migration to other countries such as the Caribbean, America, Canada, and, and various other places. We solely specialize on the UK. So we definitely know what we're talking about and we definitely understand our market. So much so that we currently have a 100% success record for our foreign investments and employment. What I mean by that is that over the last 12 years, we've brought foreign investors into the UK to invest into UK companies. So all of those investments uh, are still successful, they're still there. Some have been completed and, 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 and finished. Others are still ongoing. All of the companies that have received investment from us are still trading and, and, and growing as businesses. And anybody that we put into employment are, are enjoying the fruits of their labor and enjoying life in the UK as new UK employees. The guarantee I will give to everybody that, that uses our services to come to the UK is that 100% record will continue to happen for years to come. So we'll look after you. As well as our office in the UK, we have a, an office in Dubai and an associate office in Cairo. We plan to grow the office in Cairo during this year and move to larger premises. But the picture you see on the slide there, that's our Dubai branch, obviously not the whole building. We're actually on the 19th floor and we've been there for nearly 12 months now. As part of our services, we work with clients across the world. So for over the last 12 years, we work with clients, for example, across the UAE, Egypt, Iraq, Iran, also in Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. 
We also very much work in China and we had a, an operation over in China for a number of years. Obviously, that came to an end when the COVID pandemic hit the world and China closed its doors. But I do plan to take us back into China in 2023. And we also have clients from India, Pakistan and Africa. And we have plans to expand to other countries as well. So if your place of origin is not on there, don't worry, we're happy to talk to you. This is an important slide for me. This is to show you the quality of service and how we, what, what kind of levels we, 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 we provide to you as an organization. We are members of the IMC, which is the Investment Migration Council. And they are our, 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 our council who, who, who manages our industry in terms of investment related to migration. That's across the world. And they ensure that companies aren't like us deliver high ethical standards, including our competence, our honesty, our confidentiality, our transparency, and our compliance to, to, to global and country uh, requirements and, and, and laws. What I can assure you is that if you happen to use our services at some stage, either now or in the future, that I will guarantee that we will meet those ethical standards for your application and beyond. So let's just talk a little bit about the UK and why you choose the UK. Well, clearly, if you're going to come on the skilled worker visa, you're looking to get uh, quality employment, you're looking to earn uh, a good level of salary and, and have, a, have a future with a company in the UK using your skills. That's a given for me under the skilled worker. However, there are other areas you should be considering. So, for example, your family security. The UK is a safe place to live. Your, your family and your children are secure. And, you know, we, 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 we are all quite happy in, this, in the UK. We have a stable economy. And I know the world is going through some issues at the moment because of the COVID and because of the Ukraine war and so on. But generally, the UK has a stable economy and we're seen as one of the top economies in the world for growth. If you come to us through the skilled worker, you will have access to world renowned healthcare. This is after you've achieved your permanent residency. Uh, but you and your family, if you bring your family with you, you will, be, you will have access to our, 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 our NHS and all the support that that provides. One of the big pluses for this is that if you have children, and you, as I say, you bring your family to the UK with you, then all of your children under the age of 18 will get free education from the point they start education to their eight to their 18. Now, I kind of would like you to stop and think about this for a moment. I would assume a lot of you are in countries where you're paying for your children's education. And I know from my own experience speaking to past clients that those education bills can be quite high, particularly if you have the number of children that you have to pay for every year. So consider this in your mind. Think about what your annual cost for your children's education is wherever you are a resident at the moment. Multiply that by five. And that is the amount of money you are going to save if you apply for the skill work and are successful and, and actually work in the UK. Now, I would guess, I don't know your personal circumstances, but I would guess that's a fairly hefty amount of money you can save and on your education costs. Just a thought for you to think about. Going back to the UK, the UK is ranked the fourth strongest passport, and that's in terms of mobility. So what that means is that you can currently visit over, over 114 uh, countries around the world visa free. So you've got a fairly good opportunity to go pretty much anywhere you choose to in, in, in the world. And the other thing is that our major airports have direct flights to most of the major capitals around the globe as well. So again, travel is fairly easy for us. So let's come to the skill worker, which is the reason you're on, the, you're on this uh, webinar. So what is the skill worker? What I'd like to do is to play a very short video, which will give you the overview of the skill worker. And then I'll just delve a little bit deeper after that. Do you know that currently there are over 1 million vacancies in the UK? That's the largest number ever recorded. Industries such as technology, engineering, marketing and many more are looking for skilled individuals to fill thousands of roles. 
However, many of these vacancies cannot be filled by candidates in the UK. The Skilled Worker Visa programme, delivered by the Fresh Group, looks to attract highly talented overseas nationals who wish to move to the United Kingdom with the offer of full-time employment from an approved UK company. The programme is a unique opportunity to pursue an exciting career in the UK with specialist high-growth businesses. If you are seeking employment in the UK with the option to become a permanent resident and if you have all the required skills, look no further. The Fresh Group's expert recruitment team can help you secure your ideal job role and offer tailored coaching and advice. The programme lasts for a minimum of five years and can directly lead to permanent residency for you and your family. We are a leading provider of UK residency programmes offering an exclusive end-to-end -end service. We will support you and your family throughout the entire process, from initial application all the way to permanent residency, ensuring you achieve successful status in the UK. Contact Fresh Start UK today to find out more about the Skilled Worker Visa Programme and begin your journey to the United Kingdom. Okay, so that was a general overview from a video we produced uh, about six weeks ago. I kind of want to just dig down a bit into some of the requirements of the program. So the skilled worker is open to individuals of all nationalities, and that is those over the age of 18. And it's available for anybody seeking a unique opportunity to establish their career in the United Kingdom. The program itself lasts for five years. And as, we, as the video said there, it can directly lead to permanent residency for you, the main applicant, and your family. Just a note on that, when you apply and succeed in, in obtaining your visa at the beginning of the application, that also covers you and your family. So you can bring your family immediately to the UK when you arrive to take up your employment. The skilled worker as a visa uh, is, is a fairly easy application. However, there is difficulties in the UK if you do not go to the, the correct partner who, who will help you come to the UK. And the difficulties are quite simple, that it is very difficult to find employment unless you are a recruitment specialist targeting companies in the UK who are looking for highly skilled individuals to fill their vacancies. So to ensure that we are we're able to achieve that and keep that 100% record up that I, I mentioned to you earlier, we work with a recruitment specialist who are very close to our business, and they have a very good track record of dealing with established UK companies. And those companies uh, look to employ highly talented individuals. And most of those companies now accept, because of the situation in the UK, they have to go outside the UK and look to bring in foreign school workers. So our recruitment specialists are very good at this. This is their job. This is what they're trained to do. And they're very successful at it. So we partner with these guys and we can ensure that we offer an end-to-end -end service, which means we take you from application to achieving your permanent residency, residency in five years with the help of our recruitment partners. So what are the requirements for uh, achieving the skilled worker visa? Well, first of all, the job role must be a genuine vacancy from the employer. That, might, that sounds quite strange, but the government, the UK government, insists that we, are, we can prove that the vacancy offered by the employer is absolutely genuine and there's documentation re required to do this. Secondly, the UK-based organisation, the employer, they must have a valid sponsor's licence, and that's issued by the UK government. So, for example, there are currently, currently in the region of 45,000 companies in the UK who have a valid sponsor's license. However, there are probably three times that and more who don't. So it is the responsibility of my company, Fresh Start UK, to work with the potential employer to obtain that sponsor's license from the Home Office. We do that, it's a fairly straightforward process. 
to achieve your visa through the skilled worker visa, you have to have a valid offer of employment. And again, there are certain documentations from the Home Office we require to produce, but you have to have a valid offer before you can apply for your visa. Again, it is our job to ensure you receive that, and it's our job to make sure the process is, 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 is continued. The UK Home Office requires that all applicants uh, achieve an English language level of IELTS 4.0. And by the way, that's the lowest level that the UK government will accept. Uh, so you may have to go through uh, an English language test locally where, where you're based. However, the, there is one caveat to this, that if you came to the UK and went to a UK university and achieved a UK degree, then you could well actually not have to take this English language test. We will look at your degrees and we will advise you accordingly. One of the questions we get asked regularly for the skilled worker is what kind of salary can I achieve in the UK? Well, just to give you an idea, the average salary in the procurement uh, area is between 35 to 50,000 UK pounds per year. And that's not to say you won't earn more than that in certain instances, but that's just an average to give you a feel for our marketplace. However, the UK government says any application cannot be paid less than £25,600. I would suggest that anybody that's on this webinar now and makes any sort of application to come to the UK, you're going to earn far more than £25,600 for sure. And to kind of prove that to you, we've taken some average UK salaries, and I stress the word average. These are annual salaries, by the way, not monthly. Um, so, it, again, it's an average ballpark figure. Again, people may earn more than this, depending on the, the job and, and, the, and the company uh, offering the job. So a head of procurement, for example, could earn around about £73,000 per year. An operations manager, about £50,000 per year, a senior buyer, 40000 and a supply chain analysis, about 32500 mm -hmm. Now, these figures were compiled earlier this month, and obviously they can change as time goes on. But I stress again, these are average figures and, and not maximum, so you could earn more than this depending on the job. So let's just kind of step back a second so what is the skill worker how does it help you work in the uk well the skill worker visa allows qualified skill workers to come to the uk to work for an approved sponsored business and achieve permanent residency for for themselves and their family after five years that's it in a nutshell come and get a job be highly paid highly skilled jobs bring your family to a safe country and create a future for your family. That's the skill worker. Let's have a look at what the job market offers at the moment in the UK. Back in May, a couple of months ago, the UK government issued a report on job vacancies in the UK, and they stated that the, 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 there was a record number of job vacancies in the UK in May of 1.3 million. Now, if you step back and think about that for a second, the size of our country, which were quite small compared to probably some of the locations you are sat listening to me, that's an incredible high number of 1.3 vacancies, 1.3 million vacancies. As an example of how that's grown, in March 2020, that figure from, from March 2020, that figure has grown over half a million in two years. So we have a growing need for skilled workers. So what I'm trying to say to you there is that if you have a, a train of thought that you'd like to come to the UK, I can tell you now for the correct skilled people, there is a massive opportunity of vacancies. So, you know, come and have a look. Again, we just tried to give you a bit of an idea in, in your industry. So these are kind of... Uh, average jobs availability in some of the major cities in the UK for the procurement and supply market. So as you can see there, um, that one there is Glasgow in Scotland. So these two are in Scotland, Glasgow and Edinburgh. You see there's a total of 468 and 155 up in Scotland. In the northwest of England, there is 293 in Liverpool, 758 in Leeds, 1086 in Manchester. 
the Saviour doing the maths when this was calculated in June, that, that is over 2,000 vacancies in the procurement and supply industry just in the north of England. There's 820 in Birmingham and nearly 4,000 in London. So you can see the, the job vacancies are spread around the country and there's lots of opportunities. To kind of break that down a little bit on this graph here, we try to look at the available jobs in the UK under these headings. So anybody in the supply chain, job vacancies, there's around about eight and a half thousand total. In the procurement industry, there's just over 9,000. And in the logistics industry, there is a roughly nine and a half thousand job vacancies. Obviously, that changes as time goes on. Uh, but you again, it just gets home the point that there's lots of opportunities, lots of vacancies, and they are spread across, across the UK uh, for people uh, in the procurement and supply industry. So that's the kind of skill worker uh, area. But what do what can we do for you? What can fresh services do for you? Well, first of all, we review applications and CVs to ensure that whoever applies to us um, meets the requirements of the UK Home Office and the UK uh, job market. So we review applications and we update your CV. We once we accept you on board with us, we will then take you through interview training because I would suspect most of you, have, if not all of you, have never been interviewed by a UK company. So we 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 help you with the with being able to be successful with that. We then approach companies through our recruitment partners I mentioned earlier, and it is then that takes you out to market your 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 CV out to market, and we find companies who have vacancies available that will suit your skills. We arrange uh, interviews and we match those interviews to your skills. Now, those interviews could very well be more than one. So in some cases, particularly in the technology field, for example, it's at least three interviews with the same company. But we will actually manage that for you. Once you've gone, we've gone successfully through that and the company says, yes, we'd like to offer a, a job to this applicant, then we create a, a valid offer of employment from the company and that has to be issued to us in writing so that it's you know we can prove that a home office uh, and from that uh, we create a, a legal document which is called a certificate of sponsorship it's a job offer that if you like uh, which is required by the home office for you to apply for your visa um, and then once you've received your visa uh, we actually work with a third party in the UK, a contracts and employment law contract specialist, and they draw up your uh, employment contract with the company rather than the company do it themselves. And the reason we do this is to protect you, the applicant, because we want to make sure that your contract protects you for every uh, employment law situation that we have in the UK. So it's done by a third party. And it really is to, to, to support you and the company to ensure we meet all the requirements of, of the UK law. We also provide a five year support program uh, from application point to successful permanent residency. So at that point, we've taken you through everything I've just explained, plus we'll support you for five years. And what we mean by that, if you have any issues with your job or you missed it, wish to change job during that five period five year period we will support you and then we will also ensure that you correctly apply for your permanent residence uh, application for both you and your family and ensure that you're successful in it and achieve that we work with a number of uk immigration law specialists and it is their job to ensure they take you through the visa process and it is their job to liaise with the Home Office and to ensure that you and your family are successfully issued with your visa. Obviously, there's a lot more points to what we do as a company, but they are the main headlines, if you like. So what do we require of you for you to make the application? Well, it's simple. We require a CV from you and we require one of our application forms to be completed. Uh, the reason we ask for the application form it ensure that you answer the questions that we're going to get asked by the Home Office on for your application. So that's why we require both CV and application form. We have a review committee here in our office in the UK, 
and it is their role to assess all applications and CVs on a weekly basis. And one of three things will happen at that point. First of all, we will say, yes, we want to take this client forward, in which case we take you, start to take you through the process. Second option could be that, yes, we think you could actually meet all the requirements of the visa. However, we have questions to some of the information you provided us. So we will come back and talk to you and, and get answers to those questions. And thirdly, unfortunately, some people we have to decline. So it's a no, but we will tell you why it's a no and make sure you understand the situation. Now, the benefit of us doing that is it at that point, until you get a, a positive or a negative answer off us, you will not be charged any money. You will not have to sign any contracts with us. It's only at that point, and we say, yes, we want to move forward with you, that we will charge you a deposit fee and we'll get you to sign our contracts. We think that's the fair way of doing it because you need to know that you're not paying money out without being able to progress uh, as, as, it, as happens elsewhere. Um, from that point, we package your CV and your application form to make sure it's acceptable to UK companies. And then, as I said earlier, we will then hand you over to our recruitment specialists and they will then market you out to UK companies who are looking for people with, with, with the applicant skills services. We will arrange interviews with up to three companies. And as I said a few minutes ago, those interviews could be more than one interview with, with the same company. So although it could be three company interviews, that could, could be up to nine interviews, for example. And as I said, if, if you are successful, you'll receive an offer of employment, and then we take your, your documentation to the, uh, to the lawyers, the immigration lawyers, and they apply for your visa. And then thereafter, we arrange all of the employment contracts for you. So let's just recap the benefits of settling in the UK through the skilled worker visa. So what does it mean to you? Well, first of all, you will get a professional job and you will get a professional job offer that matches your skills and give, allows you to develop your future. You will generally receive a high level of salary. You will receive free education for your children. And going back to my point earlier about do the calculation in your head, over five years, how much money is that going to save you? You will receive free health care after your permanent residency. You will receive your free uh, permanent residency for you and your family after five years. And by the way, two years after receiving your permanent residency, you can apply and receive your citizenship. So that means you receive citizenship and you will also receive a UK passport. The important point here, or one of the important points here for me really, it will give you and your family a high quality lifestyle. It will give you security and it will help give you a future for you and your children to look, look forward to for many, many years to come. Another point on this is that if you are looking to further your education or your degrees or your skill set, whilst you're working in the UK, you can also study for additional qualifications in the UK. And another point not mentioned is that once the, app, the main applicant has a job and, it, and it, it is employed and working as everybody else, then your spouse can actually apply for a job in the UK. And that's not relevant to the skill worker. That person will just work in a, in a job in, in the normal way. So your spouse can work under the skill worker. As well as the skill worker, we have a second product, which is called a skill worker visa with investment. Now, Think of everything I've just told you, that all that still counts. The only addition to this is that the person who applies for the job can actually invest in the company uh, who, who employs them. So an example for this could be somebody like a senior manager, a director or a business owner coming to look for a senior job in the UK and has the ability to invest into the, to, into the UK company. So by doing that, they will be an equity shareholder. They will receive shares in, in that business. So that means if that business grows and makes a profit every year, then the, 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 the investor will, will receive what we call dividends or they'll, they'll be paid out a bonus every, every year. 
At the end of that five-year term, uh, there are two options. They can either agree with the company and take their investment back, in, in which case give the company the shares back, or if the investment has been successful and the company has grown, then they may, may wish to leave the investment with the company and that literally make, um, make money from, from their investment. So it is the school worker, as I've, I've, I've explained to you, plus investment into the company. So anybody who feels they wish to go along that route, please talk to us because uh, obviously there's, there's a lot more detail on this, but we can talk to you and we can help you. And by the way, we, are, we have roughly a 50-50 split in terms of number of people coming to us for the skill worker on its own and the number of people coming for the skill worker with investment. As you can see on the screen there, the minimum investment is 150,000 upwards. We get a lot of people investing round about the two hundred thousand pound, but again, that's subject to discussion between us and, and the UK company. So that's the skill worker visa with investment. If you wish to have more information on that, then please please let us know, and we're happy to talk to you. So that is my presentation on the uh, skill worker. On the screen there, you can see contact details of Kate. Now, Kate works in our Dubai office. So if you wish to contact us, either to ask for an application form or to have further discussion with us or to talk to me direct on a one-to-one -one basis, because you might have personal things you wish to discuss, please contact Kate. You can see her email address on there and a Dubai number. I would suggest you better do it by email um but uh yeah please 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 talk to kate so so thank you very much for your attention uh that's uh, that's me finished and i would like to answer some questions if there are any uh sam could you tell me if there are any questions fantastic great thanks ray interesting session uh lots of questions i think uh, coming in on a myriad of subjects. I think it's, it's, we thought it'd be a very interesting topic and it certainly was. But one from me before we start, uh, you went through the whole five year um, visa thing, but a question from me to kind of kick off, what happens if your employment ends before the five years are up? Well, the Home Office rule says that the individual has to be employed for five years to qualify for their permanent residency. However, what it doesn't say is that they have to be employed by one company. Obviously, five years in, in the same job is, can be difficult and depending on the circumstances. So if, if, a, if an individual is working for, say, company A, and that, that employment ceased for whatever reason, then they have three months as far as the home office is concerned to find employment with company B, who has to be another sponsored company. So as part of our premium service, what we will do is we will take that individual, we will go through the process of finding them a new employer, and we will get them re-employed and re-sign the contracts with a new employer to ensure they continue with their five-year employment. Um, Generally, that would or hopefully that would only be required once, but if it is required more than once, we would do that as well. Uh, obviously, the ideal situation is if the person stays at the same employee for five years, but we know people's circumstances change, so we would help them find alternative employment if their first employment ceases. Awesome. Great answer. And that, I'm sure that uh, was on a lot of other people's lips as well. So I thought I'd jump in first with that. Uh, but thanks for that. Let me wing through Thank some you. of the questions we've got here. So um, the first one uh, we've got is regarding the IELTS or IELTS um, yeah. test. It's saying that the, the, test, the test for this particular individual was seven, uh, but has now expired because um, the duration was two years. Would they have to do the IELTS test again if it's expired? Um, I assume so, but my advice to them would be to go back to the IELTS testing company and ask them that question. Uh, depending on where they're based, with the country of residence, um, if it's expired after two years, um, then it has to be done again. Right. Okay. Great. So answer is you'll have to do it again. Great. Uh, another question. If I go to the UK for a master's program and I graduate, can I apply for the skilled worker visa while I'm in the UK? Yes. Yes, you can. Through us, of course. 
So, so it's not just for people outside the UK. Okay, that's great. No, okay. Um, now, in terms of uh, Brexit, which was bound to come up, is there any difference in the number of candidates or applicants uh, before and after Brexit? Um, it's the, there is no difference in number because there isn't a, a ceiling on it. If, if that's what the question is relating to, um, you saw the figures of 1.3 million vacancies. Well, to be honest with you, we are never ever going to get anywhere near to filling those vacancies. Um, obviously, all of those vacancies aren't all skilled workers, but our, our, our research tells us that probably 40% plus are. Um, so Brexit really has nothing to do with this. The, there's been no change because of Brexit. The only change, I suppose, is that uh, it has an effect on the individuals from the EU. But apart from that, um, no, there's there's no numbers. It's wide open, to be honest. OK. And um, look, I, I wouldn't say the UK is particularly uh, politically turbulent, but um, in view of anything else that's happening in the world, is, is there an impact on this programme currently, or is it um, still a, a, a viable and a vibrant programme with, with lots of vacancies for people from abroad? Well, it's very viable, but um, the UK government uh, has committed to a five-year plan to bring in foreign skilled workers, particularly into the areas of technology and innovation, for example, particularly in the areas of engineering and financial technology and health technology, all those kind of highly skilled areas. Um, so if anything, the UK government is committed to develop this into a bigger stage. Um, and I, I clearly see that the skilled work is gonna be around for a good few years, probably four or five years, um, because the government is, is actually putting resources into this and they, they've actually showed this white paper to us, which is a plan, if you like, uh, on, on their, uh, the, the, the commitment to investment and resources for the next five years for the skilled worker. Right, okay. Um, thank you for that. And I'm not sure, I mean, I guess procurement supply isn't an industry per se. So some of those, key skills could could go across industries i'm presuming here um yes. yeah very okay. much so very very much so i mean um they may the individuals may be working in certain uh industries at the current time but this is why we like to see the cv and also the uh, application form completed because our team are very experienced um the person has the final stay on whether the individual will meet the skill worker is, is our head of recruitment and he's been involved in this for the 20 years not skill worker but recruitment and um, he can very easily say okay well we may not be able to fit this person into a certain marketplace but because of those skills we know there are other markets looking for those skills as well and this is why we're saying about our marketing as to the fact that we can uh, we, we, we can develop their opportunities Okay, great. And I mean, st sticking on that point, when we talk about procurement and supply chain management, um, who can apply for these roles? Do, do you have a definition internally or, or is there a broader definition for, for, for the people on this call? It's driven by the requirements of the marketplace, i.e. the UK companies. Um, but what we, we are doing at the moment, we are seeing there is a, a, a major uh, requirement for people in the procurement and supply industries. So I would say to anybody, if they are interested in looking at the UK, send us their CV and we'll send them the application form. Because as I said earlier, it's not going to cost them anything. It's not going to take them very much time. If the answer is yes, we will tell them and, and advise them. If the answer is no, we will do exactly the same, but unfortunately negatively, but at least they will know. So it really did, it's really down to the individuals. But when I knew we were going to do this presentation, uh, I asked Annie, who's, who's our marketing manager, and she looked into the marketplace and people are your members and so on. And we were pleasantly surprised to the quality of skills and backgrounds, et cetera, relating to the marketplace and availability of roles in the UK. So I would just say there's a there's a high proportion of your members that could actually 
apply for the skilled worker and, and, and be accepted. Fantastic. So it looks like procurement supply is in demand. That's what we like to hear. Sure. So sure. Um, in terms of the, uh, the, the you, you've got an average of the salaries available. And obviously, just to clarify for everyone on this call, that's those are the annual salaries that, that you listed. Yes. And, and they're an average. So there, 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 is a, there is a bottom and there's also a high, high level, level as well. But this is the average. This is somewhere in the middle. Um, the question um, uh, in front of me, and, and, and obviously because some of us are from tax friendlier environments what are the um what are, what are the deductions and taxes applicable to these salaries well individuals depending on salary levels as you're probably aware the uk has different bands for salary levels depending on, on, on what your salary is now i'm not a kind of accountant so i couldn't give you exact figures but the individuals will, will be subject to uk tax and, and, and ni they're the two main ones so uh, I think it's somewhere in the region of 40 odd thousand, I think it's 45,000 that they, they go into the 40% tax bracket. Below that, it's it's 20%, I think it is. Uh, but my advice is that they really should take advice from, a, from an accountant before they, they commit to that. But yes, unfortunately, um, having a business out in Dubai, I totally see the benefits of, of, of the Middle East in terms of tax and things like that. But yeah, the whatever the salary bands are, they will be subject to the to the UK tax, mostly just tax and NI. Fantastic, and NI being national insurance. Sorry, okay. yes. The, um, so another question, so Ray, what exactly are your fees for providing the service you provide? Well, we have uh, a program of three uh, fee packages, and we'd be very happy to discuss that with people. And the reason we have three fee packages is because when I mentioned, and you asked me the question earlier about the five-year support, that's from our premium package. And then we have uh, our standard package, which is kind of the premium, less a few, 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 few uh, offers. And then we have our very basic package, which is the cheapest package. And it literally is, we'll get you to the UK, we'll find you a job and that's it, finished. Uh, I'm very happy if somebody wants to discuss with us fees because again, the fees for our fees and the lawyers is subject to the applicant. And what I mean by that is not me avoiding the question. Uh, for example, uh, visa fees are subject to the size of the family. So if it's just one person, then those visa fees are far less as against, say, a family of four or five with children and all the rest of it. So it will be down to the individual. So I'm not avoiding the question, but if someone wants to contact us direct, we're happy to discuss it with them. Great. OK, so if anyone wants to further details on that, uh, we'll, we'll put up the um, the um, contact details for Fresh Start again, if you haven't already got them, and, uh, and Ray can give you a personal quotation on what the service uh, is uh, another question. I think you may have mentioned it before. But what what's the age range in which uh, you will work with individuals? Um, do you know, it's surprising that, and I, I'm presuming the question is probably relating. What is it? Was the, is the is the oldest age, if you like? Um, and there isn't one. Uh, however, you have to understand, depending what industry you're looking to work in, there there is acceptance. Uh, of you know age limits etc people may not be aware but in the uk we we are not allowed to ask client, uh, applicants ages on cvs and things like that unless they actually uh, offer it forward um but i think realistically if you're working in kind of technology or, or that kind of business then there has to be a kind of bracket that maybe from mid 20s to i don't know early 50s or something but there is no actual seal ceiling on this the only ceiling for the uk is when people will retire and that's going to be changing over the next few years so for the moment uh, for for most males uh, in in their early 60s or, or, or or, or 50s that's the age of 66 but i believe that's going to increase to about 68 over the next year or two same with women so they really there is no cap to say what the skilled worker can can can, can work with we're not going to say we can't work with people more than 55 for example there is no cap at all it's subject to the company so the company might say because of the job vacancy we're only looking for people under 50 for argument's sake or, or whatever so that really is subject to the job rather than the, 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 the skill worker fantastic and what's the turnaround time for the entire process once someone applies to you 
from when we when we receive the application and accept it somewhere between four to six months nearer four months at the moment um and the reason i kind of give that two time scales is because the longest period is the uk home office for the visa application and that could be done in a week it could take two months it's unfortunately we have no control of that okay and uh, another question coming in is regarding the the family residency side of it so um is there any help regarding that is that part of your process your program oh yeah so when somebody applies for the visa and for the job uh, sorry for the skill worker um we obviously will know from day one whether they're coming on their own or with a family uh so once we know it's let's just say it's the average family should we say you know two adults two children um then everything we do all the paperwork we do all, all the process we do is built around the two the, the family not the individual and that equally equates to the visa application when the lawyers do that they will then do it for the whole family with with the applicants at the front of it but with the family behind them so the whole thing we done at the same time and do you help with accommodation as well we don't personally, but we do have companies that we have an association with in the UK who can do this. So yes, we can put people in touch with those guys, not just accommodation, but schooling, housing, uh, right down to where the nearest supermarket is, for example, you know, that kind of stuff. And we get asked questions, well, what is a certain town like? You know, is it good for me to live there? Well, some we can make comments on, some we can't because we've never been there. <laughs> I was just about to say that's very subjective, very subjective. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so we, we, we don't, but we do know people that can help. Okay. Now, somewhere in your presentation, you mentioned a uh, minimum of three UK interviews will be managed. Uh, I think you mentioned that somewhere through the process. And the question here is, um, if someone doesn't get selected uh, or they do not accept the job offers what's the next step in general terms if it's just because the you know they haven't fitted the particular job so they weren't uh, weren't taken on we would continue there has to be a ceiling somewhere that says we're not going to do this for 100 job interviews for example so that ceiling is is, is probably in single figures it also depends on the circumstances if after six or seven or eight interviews they just haven't got the jobs that they went for then they're clear there's something wrong with the interview process so we would review that and if that is down to the individual rather the process then what we would probably suggest is that they go away and have some training in in, in their local country and then come back to us and try again and we would try again for them but there's no no point in continue trying if it's failing. Let's, let's find out why it's failing. If it's the process and they require more training from us, that's fine, we'll do that. If it's the interview skills, shall we call it, uh, they might need third party help to kind of improve that. So yeah, but it's, our in, it's in our interest to get these people jobs. That's what we do for a living. That's how we get paid. So yeah, it's in our interest to get them jobs. And what if, what if that individual uh, has an offer but turns it down for whatever reason they, they they're not happy with the salary or whatever what, what, what's the circumstance then in terms of the jobs themselves um when we go through this process we we understand what the client wants in terms of salaries and all the rest of it uh and then we have to say to them well and you mentioned it a few minutes ago about dubai being tax-free and higher salaries and all that kind of thing and we had an incident like this not so long ago um we had to really say to this person well if you live in dubai you don't pay tax then yes i can understand why you receive that level of salary however the equivalent in the uk is this or, or the bracket of the equivalent in the uk is this so we have to uh kind of get people's expectations a bit more realistic in some cases and I'm assuming they accept that um we then go to the company and understand what they're offering in terms of salary and conditions and so on. So before the interview happens, the, the applicant will understand this is what the client's offering, this is what the company's offering. If you're happy with that, we'll get you the interview. If you're not, then we won't and we'll find you an interview somewhere else. So the likelihood is that they're going to know all that information prior to accepting an interview. But if they, if they don't accept it, then we will continue with them to, to find a job. Uh, it, it's as simple as that. Obviously, if they keep refusing offers, 
then there's something wrong somewhere we need to look at it. and that there comes a point somewhere along the line where we have to say we need to change this there's, there's something not right here but but generally i would expect the quality of the people we're talking to at the moment that we would get them jobs fairly quickly because if i take you back to the number of vacancies you know we're crying out for skilled people in this country Awesome. Well, that's that's as positive as you can put it. Um, so, so it's a it's a it's a scenario that we don't see happening now. What about the English language? How's that work? So, do they have to take a mandatory test for the English language, or do they are, are there prior qualifications checked uh, to, uh, and then we we assume they have a grasp of the language? How's it work? Well, the, they they have to. Uh if they don't have either the uk degree that i mentioned earlier or they they some people already have taken the ielts test elsewhere so that we just we just need to see the results of that and that's fine um but they they have to prove they have that quality of, of the english language not for us um but for the uh the, the employing company obviously they have to show they can speak english to an acceptable level but also they have to prove and, and produce the documentation for the home office on their visa application, because if they don't, the application will fail. Okay. And, and if, so for example, if, if they've got CIPS qualifications, would they also be required to do the English language test again? Um, I don't, yes, they would. Yes, they, they, they would, because it's, if the if the CIPS qualifications are through UK universities, and forgive me because I don't know all of them, um, then if it's a, if it's a recognised qualification by the Home Office, then no. But if it's not, then yes. Okay. So the answer is no because it's yes, it's a it's an off qual um, accredited qualification. So uh, so presumably then um, it, it'll be the same as if they'd done that qualification in the UK. Right. Okay. Uh, but we we would look at each individual application and and we would we would tell them what the what the situation is. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so um, what else do we have? Because we've got a fair few questions to get through. I'm going to <laughs> as fast as I can. Um, right. So let's see. I'll skip through a few of them. Uh, most of them are around your fees. So we will put details. Uh, contact details in the chat so if you look out in the chat everybody there will we'll put uh, contact details there so you can contact um ray and uh and, and he can him and his team can provide details of the um of, of the fees and the program as far as fresh start concerned and we'll do that right now uh but as, going back to the questions we've got coming in uh time frame we we've spoken about I mean, how does the is there an assurance about employment opportunity or, or not? Because you, you said there's lots of openings, but how do, how's the assurance work? What, what, what's the what's the probability? We don't give guarantees uh, rather than assurances, but what we do say to people is that we will give them uh, 100 percent return on their, their fees to us if we do not find them job interviews, free job interviews within six months of accepting their application that's that's written into our contract so not just me saying that on here that's actually written into our contract that we would we will provide that rebate if we if we don't do our job within six months however i can assure you we we have similar guarantees with with other visas that we've done over the years and over the years we've never ever paid anybody a guarantee back not because i won't because we've been successful in in in, in doing the tasks that we, we we were asked to do Awesome. And I'm going to go into the, I think most questions have been around information that needs to come directly from Fresh Start. So just okay. look for the purpose of everyone the, the you can email uh, Kate at Fresh Start, who manages Fresh Start's Dubai office. There's some questions on uh, SIPs qualifications. That obviously applies to uh, qualifications relevant to procurement and supply. So the answer is yes, those, those would be your um, applicable qualifications to, to approach Ray and his team uh, in relation to roles for procurement and supply chain. And um, I think the final question that I'll go to is um, uh, 
actually it's already been answered because the question is can you help me achieve permanent residency once my visa ends so ray just talk us through that so um yeah. five year five year employment visa ends permanent residency is 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 the requirement uh, for an individual what happens then we have to complete a series of documents and it's not important at this stage what those documents are but we would do that with the, uh, the with the applicant and with the employer to make sure we've met all the home office uh, questions we would then work with the immigration lawyer probably the immigration lawyer did the original visa application uh, and we would actually put that application forward to the home office there will probably be an interview it could be an interview like this on zoom or something with the lawyer and the applicant just to kind of go through everything um and then it literally is a bundle of documents that goes to the home office we make the application in probably four or five or six weeks we get the response um if everything's good if all the solicitors if the solicitors are happy with all the documentation uh i've never come across one permanent residency application that's failed yet because it why would it um so yeah we, we, we'd be quite comfortable with that and as i say it probably takes about six weeks from putting the, the bundle of documents together um and the applicant will see documents from the home office to say here is your permanent residency and that's as simple as that just to extend that a little bit i mentioned citizenship in my presentation just to explain that slightly once you have your permanent residency documentation you have to wait 12 months from that point to make an application for citizenship stroke passport and then 12 months from that point you will receive your citizenship stroke passport so from getting your residency it's two years to getting your passport thanks for clarifying that though there's a few nuances there that uh, that are worth explaining uh but ray um it, it, it remains to be said thanks so much for your presentation lots of information there lots of questions and we, we really do hope we've answered um as much as we yeah, can pleasure. Pleasure. if anyone has any further questions uh the contact details for ray's team here in dubai is in the chat uh, that's kate uh, so you can you can email her uh, for further details on the application process costs and any other matters um but it's been it's been fantastic it's been riveting and, and it's very positive for those who are looking to do so i think just paraphrasing what uh, ray has said there's there's a lot of lot of opportunities if you've got the requisite skill qualifications uh, the opportunities are there ray's team are there to help you and if it if it's something you want to do then there is a possibility at the end of the visa process to uh, to to apply for permanent residency um etc etc um so um if that's the path you want to go on this is an option for you to go through the fresh start and we wish you all the very very best thank you all for attending and uh, see you at the next webinar take care thank and once again thank you to rain your team thank you sam thank you for, for, for the opportunity goodbye take care all the best everyone thanks